Okay, section 5.9. It's gonna be a long one, so get ready. I will do my best to be as concise as possible. So let's talk about mining. All right, so at the very beginning, let's go over a few questions. Why don't you answer these for me? So why do we need to mine? What do we need to mine? And what products and resources do you consume that will require the need to mine? Pause the video and, uh, and then come back in about five, 10 minutes to um, have the discussion of 5.9. Okay, so what is mining? Well, mining is the search and extraction of minerals from the Earth's crust. That's as simple as, as I can make it. Basically, there are things that we want, things like iron, things like copper, things like gold that we are going to need to get from Earth's crust, all right? We're gonna find this stuff in rock. So some terms, or that's just gonna be a rock that contains a large enough concentration of a mineral to make it profitable to mine and process. High grade ore is gonna have a very high concentration of that mineral. That's really what we want to find. Uh, but low grade ore will have a lower concentration of the mineral, which might still allow us to make a profit, but maybe not as much as a high grade ore. So a little bit of, about the uses of metallic mineral resources, 60 out of 100 out of the 118 chemical elements are actually used in computer chips. So one computer chip could have 60 chemical elements in it, which is just a really staggering amount for such a small um, unit. Uh, aluminum is used as a structural material for many different things. Steel, uh, which is going to uh, be mostly iron plus other elements to help to strengthen it or give it different properties. Um, that's used in making buildings, machinery, and motor vehicles. Copper is used as a conductor since it's a very good conductor in electrical wiring and piping. Gold is used for electrical equipment, uh, for tooth fillings, coins, and jewelry. Um, uh, molybdenum is also used to help to harden steel. Now, a little bit about rare earth metals. Now, these are also metals that are found in Earth's crust, but they're very scarce, so there isn't a whole lot of them. They are used in the manufacture of a lot of different things like electronics and hybrid and electric cars. So here's a bunch of them right here. Uh, they are very crucial for modern technologies and things like scandium, yttrium, and other lanthanide chemical elements. These are all found if you look at the, uh, most of them are found if you look in that F block at the very bottom of the periodic table that's separated from the rest. That's where you find most of these elements. So they, in many cases, have a superior magnetic strength, very unique properties. And as we transition to produce cleaner energy technology um, and, and improve our electronics, these are uh, elements that are going to be necessary for the production of these things. And at this moment, China actually produces about 90% of the world's rare earth metal, metals. Now, uh, there are also what are called strategic metals. And these are uh, metals that are essential to the economic and military strength of a country. Really, these are, these are resources that are necessary for uh, a lot of different products. So things like manganese, cobalt, chromium, platinum uh, are considered to be strategic metals. The problem for us in the United States is we really don't have a whole lot, okay? What we had or have uh, has been used for the products that we have made. Uh, so we used to have a lot but at this point we have depleted them and we actually have to import all of uh, the supplies of 24 different non-renewable mineral resources, including 
a lot of these strategic metals. All right, so uh, what about some non-metallic mineral resources? Well, sand is used for a lot of different things like the production of glass, bricks, and concrete. Gravel can be used for roadbeds, uh, so beneath like the, um, the, the road and in the making of concrete. Limestone can be crushed to help to make concrete as well as cement. Phosphates can be used. Uh, remember, phosphates would be found in rocks. They can be used to make fertilizers and detergents. So uh, now that we've talked about all the products that we can get from mining, what exactly are we talking about in terms of mining? What is it? So this is going to be our way of accessing these ores and these minerals. So <clears throat> surface mining uh, is going to be what we do first. All right, this is going to be the more accessible ores, um, it, hopefully, you know, at least finding the higher grade ores, uh, that's where we would start mining. Um, so that would be surface mining. But once those are depleted, then we have to start going deeper into the earth. And that's where subsurface mining will come into play. So once we have depleted the higher grade, more accessible ores at the surface, where it's going to be a lot safer, to be honest, that's when we look underground and start digging a little bit deeper to find things that are deeper in the earth's crust. So I want you to think about, and, and there's going to be more of these prompts as we go through here. So what do you think some of the negative impacts or hazards are for subsurface mining of actually going deep into the earth into these uh, pretty deep mines? Okay, so uh, we kind of need to talk about the supply. So reserves, these are the identified deposits that uh, can be extracted profitably. So when uh, you know a country is talking about their reserves, these are what can be extracted. Have we extracted them yet? No, but they can be extracted and they can be extracted profitably. Um, so minerals, they are going to become economically depleted at the point where it actually costs more to extract and process them than they are worth. So um, that is really the point when mining is, is going to stop, right? When it becomes not profitable. Uh, so the depletion time is going to be the, the amount of time that it takes to, to use about 80% of, of the reserves of a certain mineral um, at the current rate of use, okay? So what can we do, you know, think about what can we do before a mineral is depleted and becomes economically depleted where it actually costs more to get it than it does, than it is worth. Okay, what can we do before that happens and what can we do once it does happen? Okay, um, so there are going to be various uh, depletion times based off of, so these are models right here and these are going to be the depletion times based off of the supply and the rate of use. Okay, so uh, it, it's going to be a much faster depletion time when we mine and use the stuff and then just throw them away after uh, we're done with them. Okay, so if nothing new is found, then we're going to deplete that really quickly, right? So for B, if we recycle, okay, meaning that whatever we have gotten, we then are able to reuse uh, just in a different form, then that will help to reduce the need for more minerals because we're using what we already have. Okay, if we increase the reserves by getting better mining technology, finding more, accessing more for the same amount of price, uh, then that is good. Uh, making new discoveries is also good as well. 
C, this is really kind of where we want to be, right? Look how far in the future the depletion time for C is. So if we recycle, re reuse, reduce our consumption, um, and do all these other things such as finding more, increasing our reserves by mining them better, having higher prices um, to reduce the amount of just waste, then that, that is really what we want to do. We want to have this C as opposed to B or especially not A. Okay, so surface mining. Uh, this is going to be uh, the mining of the more accessible, higher grade ores. So we would want to find where uh, there is higher grade accessible ores and that's where we would uh, do surface mining. So things like open pit mining, strip mining, contour strip mining, and mountaintop removal are all different types of surface mining. Okay, and then the production, uh, we're going to go from getting, uh, getting the, the ore from a mine, we have it, we would need to separate the ore from the waste materials, smelt it to extract the metal, uh, and then melt it in order to make the product. And hopefully, once we have this product and it no longer becomes useful, then we would be able to recycle it to get the metal back to then reuse, as opposed to just discarding it. Okay, so with surface mining, this involves the removal of a lot of rock and soil um, in order to access the ore. So basically just removing the, the top of, of the crust and, and taking what is valuable and then leaving the rest. The overburden is going to be all of the soil and rock that has been removed that is then deposited into large piles, which are known as the spoils. Okay, an open pit mining will uh, be a type of surface mining where machines actually dig pits in order to extract, so like in a quarry to extract the ore. Strip mining removes uh, all of the vegetation and the soil from the area in order to mine all of the, uh, all of the area uh, at, that, at that given location. Um, so think about digging these large pits in order to extract the, uh, the ore or removing all of the vegetation soil from an area to remove the ore. What are some negative effects that you can foresee that might result from each of these methods? All right, so we got uh, near a mine here big, big pile of spoils. Um, so, I mean, think about how easily this stuff would erode away. Uh, so it's not really a great thing. And then this is area strip mining. So just, again, removing all of the vegetation from an area in order to mine away the, uh, the ore. Contour strip mining would be like the removal at certain levels of the of the land. Okay, so removing you know first the high wall to access this coal seam to get the coal, uh, even down here to get more of the coal. Right, so this is another type of, of mining too. Now, once the resources at the surface are removed and, and, um, and, uh, and they're gone, all right, there isn't any more, then we need to look a little bit deeper into the ground to find what we, uh, to find what we need, okay? So some of the advantages of subsurface mining is that it actually disturbs a lot less of the land, okay? So that is a good thing. However, there are some disadvantages here with, subs, uh, with subsidence and acid mine drainage, where, you know, if you think about it, mining deep underground, we are going to be removing the natural rock and stuff that is below. And if there's still a whole bunch of stuff above, then that is going to uh, 
um, <clears throat> be pressing down on that area where the rock was removed and potentially collapse it. So subsidence is when um, there could be something like a sinkhole. You know, I think the bus in downtown Pittsburgh last year, um, but you know, something like a sinkhole or even just over time, the, the land will gradually just sink. Oops, <clears throat> acid mine drainage is when uh, rainwater seeps through the spoils or the exposed mine and reacts with, uh, with, the, um, uh, with the sulfur and the iron that is in the, uh, with, that is in the ground. And it will actually uh, carry away the sulfuric acid and <clears throat> that will take it to a stream and make the water really acidic and will leach away metals like iron and, and cause this whole acid mine drainage where there will be very few organisms that would be able to survive in that ecosystem as a result. All right, so um, some more negative impacts from mining, uh, wastes, Okay, so soil and rocks that are removed, um, they got to go somewhere. The slag and tailings, these, this is going to be the waste material that gets left over after the minerals are removed. So this is just everything that was not needed. And they just get left over in piles or in ponds, right? Gang, that is just the, another name for the waste material. Um, and in these slag piles, there can be toxic metals that can get blown away by the wind um, or even washed away by runoff. And these that can take it to other ecosystems where they can be dangerous and get into the, the food webs. And then smelting to, so to, to extract the metal that we want, that is going to release sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere as well as other toxic particles. So some of the negative impacts of mining, obviously destroying the terrestrial habitat, especially if it's like uh, strip mining, uh, contamination of groundwater as uh, like all of this ground that is now exposed and any heavy metals that might be there, they can get carried away by runoff. <clears throat> the release of dust particles and methane, uh, that's another big problem by exposing this ground that otherwise may not be exposed subsidence, so the land just kind of sinking down as a result of the mine being underneath collapsing, and then acid mine drainage from rainwater that, that will um, go over those slag piles and, and through the, the mine and, and extract the sulfuric acid and make uh, the ecosystems nearby more acidic. All right, so how are we going to be able to access new deposits? Well, um, by making these, these uh, products or, or these metals more expensive, that will provide money for more uh, exploration to be able to find new stuff or, or to make new technology. So subsidies, tax breaks uh, will certainly help. Uh, and improving the technology will help us to uh, process even lower grade ores to be able to access more that we otherwise would not have. Um, kind of a cool thing here known as biomining uses bacteria that can help to remove the desired metals from the wells of the deposit. So doing that within the mine as opposed to um, you know, taking the stuff out and then treating it at the surface. That's actually really, really cool. So uh, there are also ocean minerals that we have the ability to access. And um, so we can access magnesium, bromine, uh, sodium chloride from seawater. We can just get it directly and extract it from the seawater. Um, but from the sediment, on the continental shelf and on the shoreline, we can get sand, gravel, phosphates, copper, iron, silver, uh, titanium, diamonds. So that, that's a really cool uh, thing. Um, so now in the deep ocean, we can get certain uh, metal um, 
deposits from the hydrothermal uh, ore deposits. Um, so you can get things like copper, lead, zinc, silver, um, gold, and even some rare earth metals down there. Uh, and then there are these little uh, manganese nodules, which I don't know, it's just kind of cool sounding little potato sized rocks that they cover a lot of the uh, bottom of, of the Pacific Ocean and parts of the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. So that would obviously be a good supply of manganese. Uh, now, we're going to talk a little bit more about the materials revolution and how there, there are certain products that help to, uh, they're actually more efficient and they help us to depend less on some of these rarer metals. So things like silicon. Um, silicon is, is replacing, um, uh, it, as, a, as a conductor, it, it has been replacing a lot of things. Um, fiber optic glass cables um, can help to re replace copper and aluminum as conductors. Uh, high strength plastics and other strong materials um, can be produced using carbon, hemp, and glass fibers as well. Uh, yeah, so that, that's actually really cool because these products are much lighter than um, metals that might be used otherwise. All right, but the thing is, is that platinum is still the best catalyst in industrial uh, reactions. So the best at, um, you know, uh, like in a, in a catalytic converter or in, in uh, chemical reactions that need to happen uh, at an industrial level, platinum is still the best and chromium is still essential for stainless steel. A couple other things here, graphene and phosphorine. So graphene is made of graphite. So this is carbon um, and it has a, a bunch of really good characteristics. It's a good conductor of electricity and heat. It's thin, light, strong, uh, can be used for a lot of different things. Phosphorine is kind of similar. So it's a single layer of phosphorus atoms. It's a uh, semiconductor, which is actually more efficient than silicon is as uh, in chips for computers and other electronics. Um, so this can actually help devices to run faster and use less power, which is also really cool. So a little bit about uh, sustainability now, right? Everybody's favorite topic. So it is best to recycle and reuse metal products when it is possible. So by recycling and reusing, that helps to lower the environmental impact um, that would come with mining and processing new ores. So by reusing something or by recycling, meaning that we're taking it and we're breaking it back down and making something new, well, this means that we don't need new metal or new whatever from from a mine so that reduces the need for these things um, so uh, just a little bit about a an aluminum can in recycling an aluminum can that actually helps to reduce air pollution for making a new one by 95 percent uh, reducing water pollution by 97 percent and it uses 95 percent less energy so that is really really cool and I hope that convinces you uh, to, to make sure that you recycle everything. Okay, um, finding a way to substitute rare minerals uh, without having heavy uh, environmental impacts, redesigning certain processes to use less resources, reducing mine subsidies, and maybe uh, putting more emphasis on recycling and reusing. Uh, and then of course, maybe increasing the subsidies for recycling, reusing and substituting. And that is all for mining. So actually I'm surprised that we got through that so quickly, um, but this is all that I want you to do before Christmas break. So at this point, this is our last section. We will start with 5.10 when we come back. And until then, I hope that all of you have a great break and a Merry Christmas.